I'd like to call the December 6th Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, there's uh, one application on tonight's agenda. Um, and I, they're here. Um, Mr. Brenner is here. Mr. Brenner is here. Um, I don't know. So we go through the, we, we open e each application. Everybody will be sworn in. Uh, during, each, during the application, uh, we'll ask the audience if anybody wishes to be heard at that time. Please stand up at the podium. Uh, state your comments. Uh, you actually state your name and address. You're, uh, you'll also be sworn in. And we ask to keep your comments to two minutes or so, um, since we anticipate numerous comments. Um, try not to repeat things that have been said. Once they're said, we do take them into consideration. And that's it, All right? Yep. Um, so I make a motion to open, open the application, ZBA number 17-774. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Debbie? Debbie, uh, public notices been complied with? Yes. Thank you. And there's correspondence that you? Thank you. I'll read the correspondence into the record. First is from the Rockland County Planning Department, dated September 28, 2017. It's two pages, signed by I'm get, uh, Douglas J. Schutz, Acting Commissioner of Planning, and it reads in substance, The County of Rockland Department of Planning has reviewed the above item, acting under the terms of the above GML powers and those vested by the County of Rockland Charter. I, the Commissioner of Planning, hereby approve. Since the proposed variances will have no adverse impacts on any countywide interests, this matter is remanded for local determination. The next is from Rockland County Sewer District Number 1. It's dated August 31, 2017. It's one page, signed by Joseph Lafayandra, Engineer 2, and it reads in substance, Rockland County Sewer District Number 1 does not object to the plan as shown. This project does not affect any sanitary sewers within the district. Next correspondence is from the Rockland County Highway Department, dated August 29, 2017. One page signed by Joseph Arena, Senior Engineering Technician. It reads in substance, one, the Rockland County Highway Department has reviewed the information provided for the above project and has, has determined that the proposed action should have a de minimis impact upon county roads in the area. Two, the Rockland County Highway Department has no objection to the Town of Orangetown Zoning Board of Appeals granting this applicant the variances required to proceed with construction. Three, this lot is within 500 feet from the County Highway slash right away along Western Highway. Due to the location of this parcel, a Rockland County Highway Department work permit will be required for the proposed development in addition to any and all permits required by the Town of Orangetown and must be secured prior to the start of any excavation or construction on site. Next is from Rockland County Health Department dated August 23, 2017. One page signed by Scott McCain, PE, Senior Public Health Engineer, and it reads in substance, this office makes no comment on the requested variances. Comments are as follows. One, this office must approve plans for the sewage disposal per, per Article 4, Section 4.2.1 of the Rockland County Sanitary Code. Formal application is to be made. Two, application is to be made to the Rockland County Department of Health for review of the stormwater management system for compliance with the County Mosquito Code. Next is an email from Brenna Petri. Do you have this copies of the correspondence? If you need a spelling, on, all right, if you need spelling, let me know. Email from Brenna Petri to Debbie Arbolino and other town officials dated December 4, 2017. And it reads, Dear Orange Town Zoning Board of Appeals, as a lifelong resident, I vehemently oppose the development of this property. It is too close to St. Catharines, the rail trail, not to mention it is adjacent to residential homes. The aloof odor is awful enough to deal with as it is. The removal of more trees will just increase the mal mal malodorous fumes. I wish I could attend the meetings Wednesday and Thursday to voice my opinion, but I have nursing class. Please let this email stand as my voice. Address given is Blauvelt, New York. Next is an email from Scott Petri to the same individuals, uh, Debbie Arbolino and other town officials, dated 
December 4, 2017. Dear Orangetown Zoning Board of Appeals, it reads the same as, I'm assuming, his wife, Brenna Petrie, Scott Petrie, also giving address of Blauvelt, New York. Actually, no, it reads differently. I'll read it in full. I'm opposed to the development of this warehouse. It is way too close to St. Catherine's Rail Trail and many residential homes. The aloof odor, in my opinion, will increase if the tree barrier is removed. I am unable to attend the meetings Wednesday and Thursday to voice my opinion. Please allow this email to represent my voice in the matter. Thanks for reading. Scott Petrie, Blauvelt, New York. Next is from Dimitri Lattice, dated December 4, 2017, addressed to Debbie Arbolino, and <coughs> it reads... Please forward this to the ZBA board members regarding Linden Choice. Dear members of the Orangetown ZBA and Planning Board, I am a physician, reside in Orangetown, and my children attend South Orangetown Central School District. Please be advised that the current air quality in the area, schools, homes, rail trail, around aloof, aloof plastics demonstrates concerning levels of pollution and does not appear to support additional industrial activity. I am particularly concerned for the health of children and the elderly who would be most susceptible to the type of pollution illustrated by recent ambient air testing. It would be negligent, in my opinion, to proceed with additional development in the vicinity, especially given that the building department is not equipped to enforce existing code in terms of odor slash pollution violations. The letter attached was submitted to the town board on November 28, 2017, by a group of concerned health professionals, including myself. I also have attached a graphic that I compiled from publicly available sources that will give some context to the aquiline pollution, pollution level. Sincerely, to the Lattice MD. And there is an attachment with a, with a chart. It's entitled uh, across the top, Aquilin Concentrations, UG slash M3. And along the left side, there's a, a list of various uh, references. It's part of the public record. Anyone can view it if they wish. Next is from several people. And I will read who the signatories are, then read the, the letter. It's dated November 28, 2017. The signatories are... Dr. Robert Wells, MBA, PhD, Lorraine Vitali, MSNRN, Dr. Nelly Vega Wu, DNP, FNP, BC, Dr. Maria, Ho Maria Jose Romero, PhD, Dr. Catherine O'Connor, MD, Dr. Dimitri Lattice, MD, Dr. Kathleen Kelly, DNP, MSNRN, CCRN, CNRN, BE, Dr. Peter Gordon, MD, Dawn Howie, MSNRN, CPNP, Bernadette Del Delaccio, RN, Dr. Raphael Caniza, DDS, Miriam Byrne, NTC, Dr. Ivania Alpert, MD. It reads, it's addressed to the Orangetown, Orangetown Town Board. It reads, we are concerned health professionals in Orangetown. There are four emission toxins whose levels are measured to exceed New York State annual guideline concentrations, AGCs, in the residential and recreational areas around the aloof plastics industrial zone of Blauville. Intermittent short-term exposure to these chemicals at the measured levels is unlikely to cause health effects beyond what has been reported by residents. However, if these concentrations are representative of daily air quality for most of the year, then the exposure to these toxins might cause adverse health effects to residents, students, and those employed in the area who may be exposed on a daily basis over months or years. Especially at risk are the young and the old and those with previous health concerns such as asthma, previous health concerns such as asthma, cancer, or compromised immune systems. Further long-term testing is suggested to confirm these findings, and mitigation measures which would improve the air quality surrounding the aloof industrial zone are warranted. Additionally, the concentrations of aquilin were elevated to a degree that they may pose health risks even during short one-hour exposures. Any discussion regarding any proposed additional, additional industrial activity in the vicinity should be guided by these findings, which show pollution levels already exceeding New York State thresholds. Next is an email from Ira Steinberg, dated November 3rd, 2017. It's addressed to several citizens and several town officials. And it's addressed to the supervisor and the town board. And it reads in, it reads in full, I appreciated the letter written by Tom Divney addressed to the ZBA president, Dan Sullivan, and other ZBA board members regarding the Kerry Park project, requesting that, that project not be granted a variance. It posted... It was posted on the South Orangetown Parents Facebook page. It was thoughtful and convincing. Gladly, the ZBA did not and will not grant a variance, allowing a residential home the ability to be a boarding home. With that in mind, I appreciate if Tom and or other town board members would write a letter addressed to the ZBA President Dan Sullivan and other ZBA board members regarding the Linen Choice Project requesting that project not be granted a variance. Aloof Plastics 
seeking, seeking to construct the new facility next to its current facility under the application of linen choice and is seeking numerous variances. Size of, size of facility, reduction and setback to residential <coughs> homes, reduction and setback to the rail trail, number of loading docks, size slash distance of retention ponds in two weeks from the ZBA. I would appreciate that the supervisor and this current board contact ACABOR and the ZBA so these boards do not grant any variances to Aloof Plastics. If these variances are granted, Aloof could potentially buy back this land from Linden Choice and construct a new facility. Obviously, Aloof Plastics has not been compliant with the town codes for many years and has not been the best neighbor to this community. I hope that the Aloof Plastics slash Linden Choice application is granted no variances so future boards will not have to deal with the ramifications of this decision. Uh, address given, sorry. <laughs> 10 Murphy Court, Waldo. Next is a, an email dated November 3rd, 2017, and it's signed by Allison Sullivan. No address given. It reads, good morning. I think in light of all of the unknowns with Aquilin, it is in the best interest to, to, to postpone the Linen Choice Project. We do know Aquilin can come from car exhaust, and we do know the rail trail had ele elevated levels of Aquilin. Please read the document below from the EPA. T too many unknowns to determine the true risk to the residents who live only feet from Aloof and who are affected by the odor. Approving a facility, facility that will increase traffic with tractor trailers is irresponsible in my opinion at this point. Perhaps a re-evaluation of what should be allowed in that parcel of land is needed. Next is an email from Allison Sullivan dated November 3rd, 2017, addressed to various town officials. And it's the same one. The it's same. the same one? Yep. Okay. And there's an attachment to Ms. Sullivan's email that I just recited into the record. It's entitled Aquilin. It's uh, a four-page attachment to Ms. Sullivan's email. And that is all for correspondence. Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. Thomas and Ellen O'Hara Woods, a letter. Their address indicated as 10 Chestnut Oval, Orangeburg, New York, and it's dated December 5, 2017. Two pages addressed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I am a resident of Orangeburg, and I've lived in Orange Town for approximately 30 years. I'm writing you with regard to the application of Aloof properties for a number of variances to allow building of a 170,000 square foot warehouse slash manufacturing structure with 19 open loading docks. While the zoning board clearly has the ultimate approval over such variances, I'm writing to address the application. It is my understanding that in order to succeed on its application, the applicant must show inter alia that it cannot make a reasonable return on its investment under any other permissible use and that the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively on a desire to make more money from the property. Given that the applicant purchased this property with knowledge that open loading docks are not allowed, it is impossible to believe that it cannot make a reasonable return on its investment in the absence of same. It is respectfully submitted that Aloof is making such an egregious request for 19 loading docks in anticipation of the ZBA granting them 10 or 15, which is still a shocking number and which will have a tremendous impact on the character of the area and the ability of the neighbors to enjoy their property. The applicant also must show, I believe, that any alleged hardship or difficulty necessitating the variance application is not self-created inasmuch as the building is yet unbuilt Aloof suffers no hardship by re-engineering its plans. There is no question that the variance being sought will create an unreasonable burden on the neighborhood. The increased traffic from the tractor trailers that will be loading and unloading at these loading, at those loading docks will certainly result in a tremendous increase in both noise and pollution in an area already struggling from the uncontrolled and appalling pollution from Aloof plastics. Finally, a review of the application for Aloof properties as made available on the Town of Orangetown website indicates that the instant application appears to be a mere variation from an earlier site plan approval for a different project. However, it is respectfully submitted that a closer look reveals that more careful treatment is necessary. When the Aloof Properties first proposed building on this land in or around 2002, there was no subdivision in Murphy Court. Aloof Properties sold some of its land to Hegarty Homes, the developer of that subdivision, in 2000, but the houses were not built upon information and belief until 2006. This is significant for two reasons. First, since there were no homes yet built there, there were no neighbors for Aloof Properties to notify in 2004 when their site plan came before planning board, and not surprisingly, there was no public comment at the meeting on October 13, 2004. Second, while, this, while the site plan was approved on October 13, 2004, Loof had, on September 20, 2004, less than a month earlier, sold more of its property to Hegarty Homes, a developer of the Murphy Court, for that subdivision. The deed was not recorded in the Rock County Clerk's Office until November 12, 2004. The planning board decision indicates that it based its approval on a number of documents, including some 
notably a drainage and hydrology report that predated the September land sale by as much as two years. See Planning Board Decision, page one, the next year, too. It is frankly entirely unclear whether the site plan approved on, a, on October 13, 2004, took into account land that was by that time no longer owned by Aloof Properties at all. Because of this uncertainty, coupled, of, coupled with the fact that the site plan approval is more than 13 years old and the enormous size and scope of the proposed variances, I am requesting that this board deny Aloof Properties variance application at this time and adjourn the matter until the status of the 2004 site plan can be clarified. Thank you very much for your time and service to, the, to this community. And there's a one-page attachment, which is the, the first page of the planning board decision dated October 13, 2004. Uh, I believe that is all. Thank you, Douglas. CBA number 17-74, application of Linden choice for variances from Zoning Code, Chapter 43 of the Town of Orangetown Code, Section 3.12, LI District, Group QQ, Column 7, Street Frontage, 150 feet required, zero feet proposed. And from Section 3.11, LI District, Group 7, refers to CS District, Column 7, Number 6, no outdoor loading docks permitted, 22 proposed. And for an exception pursuant to New York State Town Law Section 280A, relation of structure to street or highways for a proposed warehouse, the property is located at 57 North Troop Road, Glenshaw Street, Orangeburg, New York, and are identified on the Orangetown tax map as Section 70.18, Block 2, Lot 17, LI Zone. Can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. Can you please describe your project to us? Um, my name is Donald Brenner. I'm an attorney in Japan, New York, and I represent Linen Choice. I think some of the letters here are assuming the fact that Aloof is the applicant. The applicant is Lennon Choice. They are a contract purchaser who are going to purchase this piece of property from Aloof Properties, not Aloof Industries, but Aloof Properties, and they are going to build a warehouse for their own company. Lennon Choice is a company which uh, represents and imports fabrics and materials for hotel use in uh, the metropolitan area. We have appeared before the Orangetown Planning Board and we received preliminary approval on July 12, 2017. We also obtained a negative declaration indicating that many of the health factors which were brought to this attention were also brought at that meeting uh, it was reviewed and the board did declare an, a negative declaration. Uh, again, as I said, we represent linen choice. We have nothing to do with Aloof properties. If the board wants to talk about the previous approved warehouse, we have that information which we will give the board, which is much larger than the one that we have right now. Right now, there is an approval for a 231,000 square foot commercial warehouse building that has been approved by the Orangetown Planning Board in 2002. This application is for a warehouse of 170,000 square feet. In other words, or in other words a reduction of around 60,000 square feet. Uh, I think Jesse will give you the full details of what the project's all about, and then we'll be prepared to answer any questions that the board has. So my name is Jesse Coakley. I'm from Mazer Consulting, the engineer of record <clears throat> for the project. As Donald said, we're here tonight representing the applicant Linen Choice, um, which is a bedding importer and supplier to large retail stores and hotels. <clears throat> the products, which are just bed sheets, comforters, pillows, blankets, things of that nature, are imported in retail packaging with no manufacturing required at the site. <clears throat> so, um, as Donald mentioned, uh, the proposed warehouse is 170,000 square feet. Um, which the subject address of the property is 57 North Troop Road. <clears throat> to the point of one of the variances we're seeking, there is no frontage, but access for the site is granted through an easement <clears throat> from Glenshaw Street out to Route 303. That is the only access for the site, with the exception being an emergency access for emergency vehicles only that goes out <clears throat> to uh, Murphy Court on the north side. But that will have a gate on it. No tractor trailers will be using that, <clears throat> only emergency vehicles. Um, <clears throat> as Donald had mentioned, the planning board granted preliminary site plan approval in July, and we're here tonight for the variance on the street frontage. 
50-50 the access through the variant through the uh, easement and um, the prohibition of the outdoor loading berths. <clears throat> um, the narrative provided with our application details the operations in full, but as a summary, <clears throat> the hours of operation will be Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., <clears throat> closed on the weekends. <clears throat> it is also worth noting, <clears throat> as Donald had previously said, that the previously approved site plan in 2004 was for a much larger building with a lot more parking and a lot more lot coverage than the current example. Some of the letters that were read into the record <clears throat> stated that there's a huge number of variances for the size of the project, et cetera. That's not the case, as, as, you, as you read into the record already, as the chairman read in. So right here I have <clears throat> kind of an aerial exhibit that I prepared showing the project. Um, it's a Google map. There's, it's a Google Earth image with the site plan kind of overlaid on it. So as you can see, here are the existing warehouses. On the left side of the plan, which is the east, you have room 303. You have the railroad track here, which you have to cross to get into the building. And then we have the landlocked parcel back here. The rail trail is to the west and to the right, and then further than that is, is Western Highway. To the north is the residences, the residences. And as you can see, in the LI zone and the nearby commercial activities, they all have external loading docks. That's common throughout not only the neighborhood, the zone, and the town of Orange County. It's common for industry too. Um, what else? So let me turn and show audience real quick. So here's essentially the site plan overlaid onto the Google Earth aerial, where you can see Route 303 on the left-hand side here to the, to the east. Glenshaw Street, which is the access, comes between the two, through, between the two buildings via an easement. The site is located in this area, residences to the north, up here, the rail trail along this side, and Western Highway a little bit further to the west. <coughs> we are, um, we also have to get approval from the Architecture uh, Community Appearance Board of Review, which we will work with them. We've supplied full landscaping plans to try to screen as much as possible um, any of the outdoor berths from uh, being as visible as possible. We're also open to planting larger trees um, than would be the customary installed size, um, and also putting fences up as well to try to minimize the impact. <clears throat> um, two of the things, or one, one of the things that um, a lot of warehouses and things try to avoid is bringing the trucks inside, and one of the main reasons is, uh, is health concerns for the immediate indoor you, there's no to vent an indoor space from those fumes is extremely cost prohibitive no warehouses really do that only large large government facilities really do that um, military things like that so I, I do wish to want to state in the fact that we did an analysis of the town of all the LI zone districts in the town of Orange Town, we, I, we have not been able to detect one indoor parking facilities. As related to the LIO district, which is one step down, 90% of the LIO districts have outdoor uh, parking facilities. I think there are one or two which are indoor for, for security reasons more than anything else. That's it. If you have questions, we'd be more than happy to answer. Can you give me a quick uh, answer on the distance between St. Catherine's Church and school to the proposed buildings? Yes. Church itself is over 200 feet, and 
almost three hundred. The question is actually, uh, we have children in that also, also we also have a college. It's part of that school, and then we have the church, which has activity that's going on uh, most of the day and into the weekend. So. Actually, the building of this particular building would be having a direct effect on the people who attend that church and the school. As far as odor and everything else that's involved in it. Can you give me an answer on what you can do to make a, a difference in a proposal? Okay, please understand. The, the Please understand, there is no odor production on this facility at all. It's strictly a warehouse type situation where material comes in and it's just changed and distributed inside the building and put in other trucks which go out. Again, the hours are not in conflict. They're within normal working hours. Actually, in an LI district, you can go 24 hours. We told the planning board we would not go 24 hours under any circumstances. We said at best we was gonna go to six o'clock at night. Uh, we don't see in any way where this particular project will affect the school, nor, nor the college, nor the church. In fact, uh, they will not be operating on Sunday, they will not be operating on Saturday. Uh, when the church really has its largest amount of people coming to the church. How, how many trucks will be uh, in use during the day? So, at future maximum you know, capacity, it would be 12 to 15 trips total that's in and out. So, six, eight. How many trucks, excuse me? 12 to 15 trucks a day? That's in and out, so. Trips, trips. Trips, that's trips, trips yeah. Trips. And just for, in the narrative that we provided was a summary of the traffic <laughs> study, which the traffic study uses industry standards, and for uh, a warehouse of this size, typically it would be three times as many trucks, but with their operation, it's only 12 to 15 trucks. So the traffic impact and the subsequent noise and odors is way less than even industry standard for, for this type of Could you warehouse. go back a second? Yeah. You, now you said trucks, so is it, is it trips or trucks? Trips. Okay. Trips. So half the trucks, six to eight. Going to Correct. Oh. In and out. Yeah, these are large, large vans. So how many trucks, though? Is it, do they have seven trucks, six trucks, one truck does all the trips? How does it work? Well, they have another. Their, their primary facility, I believe, is in Brooklyn. So not everything is done out of this one location. <coughs> some trucks are there. Some trucks are there. The trips is 12 to 15. Where do, so is there, okay, so do the trucks park there? Are there any... They stay there overnight, how does that work? So they, the way that they do a lot of their business is they come in on a container and they drop the container off. And then the container stays in the loading bay for a number of, like a day or so while they unload everything and then load it back up. The truck comes in, hooks up, pulls out with it. So that's like your truck in and out, your trips. On this drawing, we don't know where the roadway is or the in and out roads would be for the trucks to travel. Well, we, we kind of showed it to the we kind of showed it to the planning board. They come in Glenshaw Street, go over the railroad tracks, drive through the two. There are two buildings there that Aloof has. They drive between the two buildings and they go back to the property. They are nowhere near uh, uh, Western Highway. They are nowhere near Troop Road. Strictly, it's strictly through Glenshaw Street. Excuse me, I'm, I'm going to say this once. We there, there's a I will ask for it or we'll open up the. Uh, open it up for the public to speak uh, after the, the applicant has presented his case. At that time, I just ask everybody to be quiet. The uh, court reporter has to take down people's names in case there, there's a lawsuit pr following this, and that's the only reason why. So thank you, I appreciate it. So the, the proposal would be to build in two phases here, is that correct? That is correct. So the first phase <laughs> is the 109,000 square feet? Correct, it's the larger. If you want to call them two buildings, just the larger section of the building. And what is, what is the plan? So 
that piece would be built now? <clears throat> and is the other based on business, based on? The, the utilities have to be put in. In other words, the sewer has to be put in. The drainage requirements have to be put in. The building will be built. Uh, the second area will be, as business expands, then they would put in the second phase. So it's based on the expansion of the business. That's correct. So I, I'm, and what, what's the height of this building going to be? So the building height <coughs> is compliant. Uh, we have it at 38 feet. And now, did you, are all the variances on this application? I, I actually no, see no, one. No variance is required for building height. What about the setback going into the buffer? No the variance north? is required for setback. So, There's so, a 50 foot rear yard setback on the north corner of the building. So, in the ordinance, <clears throat> it said that the, uh, the planning board can grant the, uh, a reduction of up to 50% of the setback, <clears throat> and they granted the site plan preliminary approval with that reduction there of only uh, it's a 35 percent reduction for the for the building so the planning board already mm -hmm. granted that that it's correct 35 percent reduction correct it's listed on the uh, sheet three of the plan set underneath the zoning table So if you only have five or six trucks a day, what is the need for the 13 loading berths in phase one? So to, to my point earlier where the container might be left for a couple of days, they need to have the open spaces. A good number of the bays, I think six of them are in the future build out. So there's only nine or uh, I think 11 as on the front part, <clears throat> which also allows for with the way that they're positioned for trucks to come in at different angles. If you notice, the site kind of comes in. The truck has the ability to go right when it comes in, or it can go left. And that's really dependent on where the uh, containers might be left from the day before, or where the current order is coming from, depending on if it's X manufacturer that they keep, and or it's going to a retailer or if it's going to a hotel, they might operate that out of different ends of the warehouse as opposed to um, <coughs> traversing inside the warehouse with extra forklifts and things like that <laughs> and, and where the workers are. Um, allowing the trucks to access the different ends of the building gives them the most uh, optimal use of the space. So how long could have one of the box trucks stay there? I think typically, Not box, sorry, how long can one of the yeah, containers, the, containers the most is two days. Well, we, we, we don't get tied down to that, but yeah, we, we believe in the average operation is two days, but sometimes you may get some of the three or four days. I, I wouldn't want to lock it into two days. I, uh, I would yeah, not, I, I would not, because sometimes a shipment would come in and they would have to sit there until it's ready to go out. So, but I, I would say no more, I don't think no greater than four days. Yeah, uh, I would agree. Okay, un understanding that this property isn't owned by a loof, you do have to agree that this is a sensitive area for the neighbors, right? Yes. And, and the second part of this, why are there no loading docks on the east side of the building? Have you considered that? So, <clears throat> the east side of the building actually has uh, an orange and Rockland easement running across it um, where we could put parking but we can't put something that would be um, like a permanent structure uh, per se like a loading dock that would have retaining walls in it etc that's the other thing that's a makes this property uh, a little difficult is it does have the orange and rockland easement on the east side um, and then it has a lot of u other utilities, uh, water and, and gas on the, uh, on the south side and then up along the, uh, the rail trail side as well. So to the, to the point of indoor, di indoor bays, if you were to push the whole building back, you'd be able to have indoor bays on the east side? 
push the building back which way? I'm, not, I'm not sure I follow. <clears throat> well, you have, you have loading docks on the west west side. We do have loading docks on the west side. Um, it, the problem that we run into is, is circulation. If we were to extend the building that way, um, it would make for difficult access to that side of the building. Um, as I mentioned, you know, they're looking to be able to get bays on both sides. Um, so the, it would really make it difficult with the rail trail and then the screening that we want to provide along that side, the easements for the utilities that are there. And then we also have um, one of the requests that the planning board made and the DEME is to maintain this natural stream that traverses the west side of the property. And so we're trying to do that as much as possible, whereas shifting the building would kind of eliminate that natural stream, uh, the, a lot of the screening, and it would you know, push it closer to uh, the rail trail. And the church and the school. And the church and the school. Well, pushing, uh, my, my point is pushing the building closer to the west would open up some room on the east. It seems to me you have a blank slate here, mm -hmm. and that I don't think all the considerations were taken to, to try to put the bays or the dock, the docking places on the, on the eastern side away from the neighbors. Well, the, the, the biggest thing that we have really is that, that Orange and Rockland easement. I don't know that we would be able, I don't see us having the space to, to slide the buildings west enough to get enough room for a truck to turn around and, and back into a loading spot. Where is that easement? Because I don't see it. Um, if you, do you have sheet three? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, you mentioned that the spreading board has granted this 35% okay. reduction for the buffer. Uh, I'm looking at the plan board's preliminary decision of July 12, 2017. I can't find it. I just glanced through it. Shown right on the drawing, and they approved. It's shown right on the drawing, and they approved the drawing. Um, I'm assuming the building inspector reviewed this and referred the variances here that the building inspector deemed necessary and that buffer is not indicated as a variance. So I, I'm, I'm, I think your, your representation is correct. But just note on page 6 of 18 in the Town of Orangetown Planning Board preliminary site plan approval decision, preliminary, note number 5 makes reference to the regulation for the Orangetown Code Regulation with this 50-foot setback plus the 100-foot 50 foot buffer plus 100 foot setback. No indication that the planning board is, is going to uh, reduce it, which they have the power to do, by 35%. Maybe it's mentioned somewhere else here in the preliminary decision. I understand it's reflected on the drawing that the planning board reviewed and granted preliminary approval of, but perhaps it should have been spelled out also in the decision. But I just want to bring that out. This board is going to operate. Under the assumption, based upon your representation, that the planning board has granted that 35% reduction to the 100-foot buffer and 50-foot setback. Okay. We have not asked for that variance. Sorry? We have not asked for that variance. Okay. And if it turns out that that exception was not granted by the planning board, you, you're not receiving a variance from that regulation, so you may have to come back if it turns out that somebody's mistaken. Okay, I'm still kind of stuck on this building location. So if you were to rotate the building clockwise and keep the northern face of the building along the property line to Murphy Court and slide that west, would you not open up a lot more space towards the southeast? Well, the problem is, is really that, that Orange and Rockland easement and the other restrictions with the 50-foot you know, buffer and, or the 100-foot buffer and the 50-foot setback, rotating it <clears throat> also would make the access, because what we, what we wanted to do was get as far away from the residences up at, you know, Murphy Court as much as possible. That's why I like the buildings 
angled the other way, away from that, because but when you, you come then around, then you're moving the building away and putting trucks in the way, in closer to them. Well, it's if we rotated it <clears throat> to be parallel to that northern property line, we wouldn't be able to get the distance that we need because we again we have this. You know, the screening we're trying to provide on the left, the stream that we want to have there, the daylight stream that the I think I think you may, I think you missed my point. If by rotating and sliding it to the to the west would open up more space to put bays on the east side of the building. Right, but what I'm saying is we can't slide it further west because of those other items that are there in terms of the stream, the road, <clears throat> and the, the screening that you know we want to provide there. And the rotating the building. I mean, still I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty good looking at objects and rotating things. It <laughs> does look like you, you could make it work. <laughs> the biggest. The biggest thing is really that orange and rock and easement. That's that's the biggest problem. <clears throat> we cannot build under it. Danny, are you talking here? Are you talking south here? This is south. This is I'm talking about this, Mike. That slider there. Clock this is the loading docks on the south side. I want all the loading docks over here, yeah. You want them on the east side? Yeah, I want nothing yeah. over here. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it would be more... I guess less disruptive for the neighbors if there were if the trucks were only coming in the front, not driving around the whole building. They can't go too far, right? I know. That's the same amount as the loading dock. I, I think I could make that work. I know. This distance is the same here as here, so you could actually bring it down. That's his water company easement. Is not you saying it's a? This is Spring Valley Water. Yes, that's the Suez now. That's there. Okay, but you're saying uh, Orange and Rockland. Do they have an easement? No, no, no. The, the tax slot up there is Suez. Suez. Suez water, but Orange and Rockland is the easement that cuts through. Is that what that easement is? I don't yeah. see that. There's no name. It's, it's over here. Yeah, it's not. I know where it is. I just yeah, it's on the side. I think it's on the existing mm -hmm. conditions plan. Yeah. That's all right. I, I got it. Oh, yeah, it's true. I think Suez has a pump station here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. Some of the concerns is the outdoor loading dock in the area. This is the fight. So I, I'm, I'm with Dan. I, I, oh, that's the old one. There's another member of the board. Well, we need to look at a different way of doing this. Right. Well, the thing also that would happen is just by move, if, even if we rotate the building, the that's going to put a large loop road and disturbance. Because the one thing that's on this site, which you can't see on the layout plan, is the slope really rises up. So in order to put a flat building in, and then the access road, which needs to be so wide for fire purposes, and then try to grade beyond that, the, it will probably cause more disturbance further into the existing vegetation that's in that buffer. So a lot of the mature trees that are there would have to come down if we swung the building, you know, clockwise so it was parallel. Okay, my, my question is strictly around the loading berths. If right, you were I to understand. rotate, if you were to ro rotate and push it west, would you be able to fit those loading berths on the east side of the building? <clears throat> they, the the biggest thing that with that is the is the Orange and Rockland easement there. That but, would be the deterrent. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm looking at it, and I, I can see Physically, that... Physically, space-wise, it, it could probably work. The building would have to be modified. The building would have to be modified. And my point at the beginning of this is that you're, you're starting with a blank slate. I don't think that it's been well thought out of how to least impact the neighbors for, for this type of a variance. 
you have loading berths, outdoor loading berths, all around the building. And I, I mean, you know, Don, I, I know you've been around a long time. I don't think I've seen that anywhere on f three sides of a building. Four sides. Yeah. And the, well, and I mean, the planning, I, I agree with you 100 percent about the, the seen, outdoor loading berths. However, it, this many, you've this not close seen to it in the LI district. You you you've not seen it in the LIO district, which the board's always been. Uh, Nine, I've, you, in fact, we've had LIO district right next to residential neighborhoods, and you've given this kind of situation. You've not seen it on the LI districts because we have very limited LI district in this town. Okay. And and the LI districts just. Needed okay. no, so to operate you, you, that so way. So you you agree with me essentially? You're agreeing with me. I, 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 I of the LI districts I know, I know FISA has a tremendous amount of LI uh, zoning. I, I know of the of the ones I know, I know a worldwide Volkswagen when they had the property on Greenbush Road, they have all their loading districts right against the residential neighborhood, and they're all open too, and that's right on North Greenbush Road. Uh, so the ones I know are all open, and, and, and it's different now today, too. These are vacuum-type closures. When this truck comes in, they're closed in a vacuum. You don't see sound. You don't see anything. They are fully enclosed, and, and it's way different from the old days when you just had an open thing and they opened up a door and there was noise and there was everything else. These kind of closures are, are modern closures today. They seal it. They don't let... How do we know that? Pardon me? I don't know that that's what's going to be installed. Just as an example. As an example, that's how they build them today. You can stipulate it. That's how they build it today. We have no problem you stipulating that it's going to be a vacuum type <coughs> closure. We'll go along with that because that's the way they build them today. They don't build them just open garage doors. But the planning board must have had the same concerns because in your preliminary site approval, um, item number 10 says that they recommend that the ZBA um, ask require that the berths be enclosed within the building. That's item number 10. Uh, if you take a look at it, that was from, that was changed. That was not the decision. It's preliminary. That, no, that was not the decision. There was, a, there was a subsequent meeting held and the planning board reversed it. They did not say that. Do we have that? They did not say that. This is entitled preliminary site plan approval. Yes, State correct. July and that was recorded, that was recorded improperly and it was changed. This is planning board did signed not. And recorded in the town clerk's office. And I am telling you right now, it was changed. It was improperly so there's recorded. there's a subsequent, there's an yes, amendment? Yes, there's there's there was an amendment to it in which they said, no, we did not take a position on that. We just had a lot of stress. Do you have a copy night. of that? We have it. I will get it for you. I, I don't know if... That's the one Cheryl gave me today. Well, then she didn't give you the latest one because they changed it. Because we went for the minutes and changed it because that's not what the planning board said. The planning board is under a lot of... So you're telling me that there's an amended preliminary site there was plan a, approval from the planning board? There was, a, there was a sentence that changed that. That was not what the planning right, board agreed upon. Right, but you say a sentence was changed. This is a, a legal document. Okay. So Dennis, you, I am telling you something now. Just listen Don, to I'm me. I'm just trying to get clear for the record what okay. the planning board is recommending for, in the preliminary the record, site plan approval. For the record. We the, have the legal document here signed and filed in the town clerk's office. If there's a subsequent amendment to this, then that's that's fine. That's, that's there. Fine. There is a that's sub. Okay, but there, there is a subsequent. Quite we frankly, need to have it. Need quite to frankly have it. I don't think it really matters if it's on paper. I mean, that's just kind of a redundant statement anyway. That is exactly why we're here and what we do. So I, whether it was said or not, it well, might as well have been said and put on paper. Well, it's okay. That's why we're here. This is what we're looking. It's not what was said though. It's that's fine. To let's, let's carry on. Just recently, we've had at least two applications from large companies that redesigned their building to move the loading docks as far away as possible from the residences. What we were trying to do with this initial design was keep the disturbance as far away from the residences. I, I entirely disagree with that, Steve. You have loading berths on every side that there's residences. Well, well I'm saying and, and you're talking about your loop road? Disturbance the loop road has going to have trucks Yeah, I'm around. saying removal of existing vegetation and buffer and, and natural features. Okay. That's what we're okay. trying to natural, maintain natural. as much as possible. Okay. Because of where okay. the loading docks are, you know, if, if, if that is the primary concern as opposed to the removal of the, you know, potential 100-foot buffer that's there. So we want both. <laughs> <laughs> 
Everybody in this room wants both. <laughs> I understand that. We have preliminary site plan approval for this building. Okay. There's a prior approval for a larger building that has external loading. <clears throat> that site plan has that. But the surrounding conditions were different at that time. <clears throat> I understand, but correct me Just if I'm wrong, Donald, they could build that. They could build that they could. building. Yes, they can. Yes. It's much larger and it's much more environmentally disturbing. But they don't necessarily the have to have outside loading berths. They have outside loading No, berths. I'm not saying that, but that they could build a building. With outside loading berths. Well, that was approved. That's yeah. correct. Okay, I'm saying that's what was approved back yes. then. Remember, but I, I, I think if you look at the land, I think Jesse's really, he's trying to minimize land disturbance. Land disturbance would be more of a problem to the neighborhood than the location of the, the location docks. of a loading dock, which will be used maybe <laughs> twice a day or something like that. This is, and, and with these vacuum closures, uh, it's, that is minimum disturbance. If you start moving the, the amount of ground that you're going to move to do it with what we're thinking about, it would be much more of an environmental problem. Well, in, in looking at the previous decision that's proved that you can build today, I disagree with that. There, there's a lot of macadam on this plan. You're basically paving the entire footprint. Well, we could have up to 80% lot coverage. Right, which, which is what you have for 2004. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just a oh, reference. I'm looking at the plan from 2004. The right 2002 now. had 252 parking spaces approved. This, this project has 75 parking spaces approved. We've, we've dropped 200 and somewhat parking spaces. That's a lot of macadam that's not being so, built. So now, now walk with me for a second, right? So considering that, in my mind, it's, I, I don't think you'd be disrupting any more if you were to put the loading bears on, if you were able to put the loading bears on the east side. You were gonna, you could essentially mow down all those trees anyway. Well, you make it flat and pay them. Yeah. I, um, I'm having a problem on yeah, this, are you, what you're saying. Are you because saying you wouldn't if have any dirt, the entire- You wouldn't have ground trees or anything left if you built the original building <coughs> with all the macadam. That's what he's saying. That's correct. The, the entire lot's okay. macadam. So okay. I'm so asking, now that, but this is but this is not the case yet. We've we've, we've right. changed. I know. It. I know. So I'm asking. I I again, 13 years ago, mm -hmm. very different circumstances. Right. And so it sounds like what you're saying is the board would rather the more disturbance, more coverage to accommodate relocating the lot, the loading docks to the east. Well, the board is saying absolutely the opposite of that. <laughs> but, but yes, that's what I asked you. But that's, what, that's what you're getting. <laughs> no, we, like I, know, said, I know you're asking like for Mike both. Mike said he wants both. Right. right, yeah, yeah, right. We want everything. <laughs> and I, I also, I, I'm just curious what that option is. I mean, in looking at it 2D, can the, do the dimensions work to do it? Do the dimensions like, work to do 12 outdoor loading birds instead of 19 or 22? If that's the case, I'm, I'm more inclined to look at 12. 12 with this, with our current layout, or? No, 12 with my layout, <laughs> my made up layout. <clears throat> they really like the flexibility of the extra berths to be able to have the containers left there and still maneuver other trucks in and out. So perhaps the, you could make the building smaller. Well, you know, also make it larger. They can buy, they can buy the Somebody existing map and make it twice large. You, you're here because you want a smaller building, and so we're talking about making it smaller. Well, we're here because this particular client doesn't need the larger building, they, but they need this size building. They do need this size building, and they're prepared to expend a large amount of money to do it. question which I think should be looked at, what is the basic disturbance of these loading docks? What is the disturbance on these <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. The, the question is what is, okay. what is the basic disturbance of the loading docks on the area? I mean, you, you have, you have a, a number of loading docks that are going to be used very infrequent. And, and they're going to be used during the day, and they're going to be used just during the weekday. 
to get an operation to work within an economic feasible limits in which the client is now coming in, reducing the size of the building, reducing the size of the parking spaces, and, make, and he's prepared, which he will, we are prepared to go before the Architecture Review Board, install serious fences and high trees to actually screen this so that the, the bordering areas will not be disturbed. I mean, we, we've got a program here to really install very large trees and fences to protect the residents. Well, th this, this is a serious inve investment, a serious investment, and, and these people want to be good neighbors. They're not looking to be, they do not produce odors, they do not produce anything. They are, they are using the, the, the land, which is what it's zoned for, and they, they, tr they will be good neighbors, based on the fact that they're working just on weekdays, and they're working only within limited hours. And that's, that's, and they will put in these pressure things that you're talking about. Connections. And what's the cost to actually enclose these bays? So the cost of construction uh, on the low side would probably be like $120 per square foot. Um, and to enclose these bays, it would probably be about 25,000 square feet of building added on, um, which would be roughly about $3 million if you multiplied it out. That's before factoring in any um, Ventilation costs that are required for that are special required for the indoor uh, fumes. So did I hear you say before? I think I did that they in the phase one piece you don't need all thirteen bays. Did you say something? You said nine before. Am I um, correct? I, I, I was just doing the math quick in my head, but yeah, it's, it would be the 13 that are there. So not the nine you said before. Right. I miscounted the ones on the phase two. The four on the side, away from the <laughs> houses. <laughs> Sorry, you said, can you, can you redo that math? You said $100, $120 a square foot. Yeah. 2,500 square feet? 25,000. 25, oh. Sorry. Yeah, zero. <clears throat> um, again, two. Ooh, I just wanted to finish my point from before. Like, two dimensionally, looking at just you know, a layout plan without taking into consideration the, the grade of the site. You're right, it is, you're right, it is, a, it is a blank slate to some degree. But when you factor in full site planning things such as grading and stormwater, utilities, lighting the site, things like that, it becomes very difficult. And what we wanted to do in going from, you know, it wasn't necessarily a straight up blank slate um, because there was the 2004 approval which they looked at and said okay this was what was approved this large building oriented in this fashion granted those homes weren't built at that time um, but what we wanted to do was get a lot of the disturbance you know physical ground tree removal you know grading land disturbance away from that north west corner of the property as much as possible so that's why all the parking got relocated to the south side for 
the cars, the loading docks were, a couple were left on the north side just as was the previous <coughs> approval. The closest loading docks are really directly across from the water company land. Um, on the north. On the north side, so that was kind of like the thinking. It wasn't necessarily we have this blank slate. It was okay. This template was previously approved. We're gonna pull back in the areas that were most sensitive to the prior approval in terms of and and considering where the, the homes came in in that northwest corner. <clears throat> so that was kind of the thinking and trying to keep it. <clears throat> to the southeast, you know, as much as possible, but still understanding the elevation is the highest on the north side. It runs down to the south side, and that's where the stormwater's gonna go, that's where the sewer's gonna go. So we do have to take into account those other aspects of, of site planning. It's not just 2D, this is where the setbacks are, you can push your building anywhere you, any way you want. That was, that was really what led to this design. Are there other alternatives that could be explored? Yes. Um, but they do come with their own set of issues and kind of trade-offs. You know, pushing the building to the north, aligning it parallel with the northern property line is going gonna, is gonna to result in further disturbance in that area. Can you move some of the loading berths from the west side down to the south side? That's something we would have to check with the, the applicant themselves. I know they, you know, as part of their current business model, that's what they, what they want. The south side would really be constructed at a potential future later date. So they might not get to use those, those bays at at the initial set, set out. These loading docks, you got 22. Are they ex made so that the internal portion of the building is accessible to the loading docks? Is that the reason why you have so many around? We don't have 22. We have 22. Yeah, so 19. They're, they're set at, uh, the elevation is like four foot lower than the, the finished floor of the warehouse. So the the cab or, or the, excuse me, the uh, trailer, trailer the, can back up and be level with that first floor. And, yep. and then it's the access inside. But the uh, loading docks are made so that the, they can get into the section of the building that they want to get to. Correct. 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 We don't have 22. We have 19. 19, it says. We have 19. We don't have 22. Oh. The, the posting said 22. 22. The, the plan oh. says 19. Oh. There were, as far as I am, no, there was, there were no variants. It, no it, had, it had final approval. Um, it just never. Final planning approval. Yes, it did. Final site plan approval. Yep. Yes. So really, really what we're looking at is this plan with a smaller building, and that's it. We usually have a little compromise, and I'm not Pardon hearing me? We usually have a little compromise. I'm just wondering if... Well, I, I think what we're trying to compromise based on the fact of heavy fencing, trees, uh, there is a, so on the left hand, on the west side of the building, there's kind of the, uh, the bump out that has the loading docks on both sides. Mm -hmm. What we could do is potentially do something similar on the, uh, the north side where it's the closest that would pull the loop road um, out of the buffer. So it would essentially be kind of like rotating those docks so they wouldn't be 
you know, directly facing north-south, they'd be facing east to west. And since they do have the four-foot grade, we, we would certainly be amenable to putting up, like, um, you know, an extended privacy wall or fence or something like that that would essentially <coughs> shield those sides, you know, the north-facing side of those lots. I think, um, yeah. extension of the building coming out, so then you can turn the loading docks this way, and then we can put, you know, privacy fence and walls here, screening on this side, and then you know the loop road is able to stay completely outside of the buffer. We would still propose large trees, fencing, screening as much as possible here and along the, the rail trail side, but that was one um, that we kind of were, were kicking around to because we were still in the avoid as much of the disturbance to the buffer as possible. So this was kind of an alternate 2D thing that we looked at that would still allow the trucks to access this part of the building and potentially provide um, you know some hard screening like a, a privacy wall that could make to be look like the building or, or something else. That would be still four days? Uh, uh yeah. What's that? It's still four gate, it doesn't look like four. Yeah, four right here. Yeah. Okay. And we could potentially, you know, you know, do three and, and two on the other side or something, because <laughs> it would allow for it to double double side. So this is really just a, a schematic, but this is like just the idea of the intent. So would you take one off the other side? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so what, what they were doing was um, if they, they would pull one from over here to over here or you know, put more over here, what, they would like to have at least four in this spot for this access, but if you, know, you want to do five here and one less over here, you know, we, can, we can work out that math. Have, uh, I'll show them. Yeah, I have a, I have a small version. <laughs> Again, it's a sketch, so there's nothing you know, in terms of numbers. We just wanted to show where this, the items could be. For, for example, we could also, you know, potentially extend the road a little bit and, you know, even beef up the screening or the wall that gets put there so it, it's high to more. Like right now we just did it <coughs> as tight as possible trying to keep disturbance down, but if, you know, making it look like the major inside of, you know, a wall, um, we certainly can, can do that. Yeah, 
Chairman, do you need another? I have another copy of my own. Do you want another copy? I think no, it's Where? made its rounds. So just call Do you want it back? Um, yeah, that's fine. Let's put it in here. Actually, you know, the zoning board did look at it. And so, you know, I, I can give you know, a full size one. Let's make it part of the ready. No, that's fine. You look at it. I'm saying we can keep that one. Well, keep okay. this one. We don't need the first. give it to Debbie. Okay. Debbie, I circled it. I know it's not. Just, just know Debbie uh, yeah. submitted that. Yeah. How many uh, loading docks were in your 2002 <clears throat> plan? There were 15. There were 15 loading docks and 252 parking spaces. Okay, how many parking spaces now? How many now? 75. At this point, I'll open up the public portion of the meeting. So uh, just please form a line, just uh, stand behind the podium. Again, state your name and address for the court reporter. <coughs> Everyone will be sworn in. Mr. Chairman, before I give my, present, uh, my statement, uh, I have a statement signed on to by 132 of our neighbors. I was hoping I could get more than the allotted two minutes to read it. Uh, sure, that's fine. Thank you. I yeah. that. Yes, ma'am. Alex Gad, A L E X G A D D. My address is 8 Murphy Court in Blauville. And ju just for the record, it's, it's the exception because I don't want 132 okay. people reading the same. <laughs> exactly, and that's what will happen. No, some people hold me to the two minutes. So no, I appreciate it. it. Thank please, you. Please raise your right hand. Sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Alex Gadd. I live at 8 Murphy Court, Blauvelt, New York, 10913, and my family and I have done so since 2012. My home is almost immediately adjacent to the project proposed by Lennon Choice. I'm concerned about a number of impacts this project may have on the character of my neighborhood, my property specifically, and my family's quality of life. As the board knows, the touchstone of an application for a variance is an alleged hardship the project sponsor would suffer if a zoning law was strictly applied. In the case of an area variance, the decision to grant or deny <coughs> involves the weighing of the variance's benefits to the applicant against the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare the variance would place on the neighborhood and community. In making this decision, or making its decision, the board must consider five factors related to the alleged hardship. One, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the area variance. Number two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area variance. Three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. And five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. My statement tonight will address the criteria to the extent possible. However, unfortunately, I'm unable to address fully the application tonight because the documents on file with the town do not contain some basic supporting information from the applicant. As an example, the documents do not explain the nature of the alleged hardship. The applicant has not documented, for instance, the nature of the hardship it alleges it would suffer if the loading berths were enclosed until we heard something tonight. Similarly, there are no documents on file which explain what efforts, if any, the applicant has made to achieve the benefits sought in the variance request by other methods. The applicant has not explained the the extent to which it examined other sites for its warehouse, or if its operation or site plan could be modified to avoid the need for the variances. To the extent that these and other, more, uh, other important information is submitted at tonight's hearing, I request that the hearing be continued at a future date so that I and other affected residents can review this information and provide appropriate input. Otherwise, the public has not been given a fair opportunity to provide comments and influence a decision that affects our homes and quality of life. 
I would also note that the applicant has the burden to demonstrate that the issuance of a variance is, war of variance is, is warranted. Therefore, if it does not provide adequate explanation of the hardship or of its efforts to achieve the sought after benefits through other methods, this board should find against the applicant. Personally, if this application is approved, the impact would be extensive, not just to me and my family, but to the, our entire neighborhood, including college, Cottage Lane uh, at Elementary School, Tappan Zee High School, Dominican College, St. Catherine's Church and School, as well as anyone trying to enjoy, enjoy the newly constructed rail trail. The negative impacts would include, first of all, noise, a significant impact in increased noise. Tractor trailers pulling in and out at any time of day or night, regardless of what was stated here tonight, because there's no way to restrict that operation once these, uh, the building is built and is in operation. Uh, complete with engine noise revving, air brakes engaging, all would occur on the residential side of the factory as little as 100 feet away with the loop road. Additionally, open loading bays being petitioned for would create even more noise, regardless of what Mr. Brenner says. All of this while the wooded area that currently exists to buffer the sounds of aloof would be largely removed, leaving almost no buffer to absorb the additional noise. Backyard barbecues, catches with our children, biking or walking with our families or walking our, our dogs, all this would be ruined by the potentially consistent and constant noise, all of which is possible given that there are no restrictions on when this factory could be in operation. Since the applicant seeks to have this board approve open loading bursts, which is prohibited practice under the town's zoning law, it should be obligated to study the impacts and to demonstrate that they won't cause a problem in the community. There's nothing in the application that does either of those. The second big impact is air pollution. Additional pollution introduced by tractor trailers pulling into this very secluded area in the back of this new proposed property that borders the residential zone of, of their property would increase the already unhealthy air that we've established has been caused by aloof. Our health has to be protected above the interest of any corporation, and there is no other way to interpret the impact of these trucks than to recognize that the air quality would get worse. These impacts lead to one underlying issue. Property values would be adversely affected by the project, and impacts will only be hurt worse if variances are granted. Your job as a Zoning Board of Appeals is to protect our property values above those of a corporation. I cannot see how you, any of you can say that the introduction of this warehouse or factory will do anything other than to devalue the properties between Cottage Lane and Mountain View Road from Western Highway and points west to Moisen Road and points east, and that is unacceptable to me. All of the variances sought are substantial. Every single one of them seeks the maximum variance from the legal requirements. The variance from the frontage requirement does not seek a reduced road frontage. In some cases, it seeks to have the project approved with no ro road frontage. The same reasoning applies to the variance from town law section 280-A. In addition, the applicant seeks the construction of 19 loading bursts, all of which, which it seeks to place outdoors in contravention of the zoning law. The zoning law prohibits even a single loading dock from being so located. It's also clear that any alleged hardship is self-created. Linen Choice knew full well that the items it seeks relief from were prohibited by law, and yet it still intent intentionally chose to pursue the project nonetheless. In short, Linen Choice is not the victim of the zoning law. It created the problem by pursuing a project knowing from the outset that aspects of it were prohibited by law. In closing, I wish to bring to the ZBA's attention that its sister agency, the Town Planning Board, in its decision to approve the preliminary site plan, stated its op opposition to granting the variance for the outdoor loading bursts. In the July 12, 2017 decision, condition 10, on page seven, it stated the Planning Board recommends to the Zoning Board of Appeals that the loading bursts be enclosed within the building. Thank you for the opportunity to provi provide comments on this variance application, and I look forward to providing additional comments uh, at a continuation of this hearing. On behalf of all of us, thank you very much. So, and j just as a point of record, there, there is an approved plan. If we don't approve this tonight, we deny it. That approved plan can be built. So what we're up against are two options. One, to build a, sm a smaller warehouse with more buffering, or they can build the original plan as it was, as it was approved. Please, yeah, yeah. So, because I, I, I am, cur I, I, I am I, curious I, I, about everybody's input on these two options that we have. I understand. Now, and, and again, another point just to clarify, the 280A and the zero-foot uh, front road, that is not self-created. That's actually the, uh, the actual, whoever created the zoning map. So, it, actually, 288 law doesn't require our approval, as far as I understand it. Landlocked properties, and 
flag lots are. Section 288 yeah. reflects that landlocked pro properties have a right to summarize simply have a right to access the nearest public highway, roadway, street. And New York State Town Law 288 addresses that. It does say that the variance to allow access from a landlocked property uh, requires approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals under New York State Town Law Section 288. That's all. Understood. This has to do with access to a landlocked property. Understood, but they could have access to the property without, where they're looking for the variance with zero frontage is around the, ro around the ring road. They could have access to the front of the property with no ring road. I mean, there are ways to no, address there's, that. There's other Yeah, the only purposes. way that they would be able to, to have frontage, which is another way of looking at it, abutting a public highway, roadway, or public thoroughfare, is if they acquired land owned by someone else, if, or perhaps, uh, unless aloof, aloof real properties, and whoever the record owner is of this property, owns land that connects to, let's say, Route 303 or another public highway or street, that would be the only way to have frontage on a public thoroughfare, is if they were deed in title touched a public thoroughfare. Because none of their deeded real property, it's landlocked, they need a 280A variance, that's all. But they could ab abide without the variance if they built a smaller building. Let's all agree with that. I'm sorry. No. 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 It can't. It Even if they, built, if they built a snack shack, you know, of, yeah. of, of 500 square feet, they would still need the New York State Town Law 288 variance. Okay, my, my, I correct, I stand correct. So what we're looking at are really just that the one variance we're looking at is the outdoor loading docks. Okay, right. well. The, and, and again, it's those two options, so I am curious to, for you to well, weigh in. Well, my, my feeling about that is that it feels like that's the choice, but to me that seems like a false choice. We've had the 200, the larger factory theoretically on the books since 2004, They've never built it because no one's buying it. So we're talking about this or nothing, which would be the continuation of what's happened before. No one's talking about building that except as a threat to get this exact plan through, and that's our perception of it. Yeah. And thank you very much. I appreciate it. Name and address? Anthony Lopefito, 30 North Troop Road. Can I spell that last name? L O P E R F is it Frank I D is in David O. 30 North Troop Road. Thank you. you sort of <clears throat> tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Thank you. Uh, the approved 2004 warehouse, uh, these are the things that did not exist back in 2004. There wasn't a Lowe's. There wasn't a stop and shop. <clears throat> the Murphy Court houses weren't built yet. There was no FedEx warehouse on 303, and there was no rail trail. <clears throat> I used to work part time uh, down at Braley Park at a company called ADS, uh, right on 303. That building is 219,000 square feet with a height of 29 feet. That building only had six truck bays that were enclosed. What they want is enough truck bays three times that. Now, they're claiming that there's only going to be six or seven trucks coming in and out. They haven't said how many trucks are going to be parked there overnight. So, yeah, they can have six trucks come and go, but if you're permanently having six trucks there that can be added, at one point there could be 12 trucks parked there. Uh, they're saying that they're not, they're not associated with aloof. Uh, my question is, how close is that building that they're proposing to a loop? Because I think one point somebody said that, well, what happens if down the road, Lynn and Choice decides to sell back their property that they already constructed the warehouse to a loop? And we all know that a loop for years have been trying to expand their, their warehouse. So a loop's try to get multiple uh, addition to the warehouse of truck bays, and this would basically in session give them another 18 truck bays. Um, they're saying that they need the current, their current building size needs to be this big. They have a building in Brooklyn. I'd like to know how big that building is, uh, how big that warehouse is, that they're claiming that they need this size to do their job. Uh, and, uh, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you.
Liz Dudley, 250 South Greenbush Road in Orangeburg. Liz Dudley, 250 South Greenbush Road, Orangeburg. Um, I'm coming in here today to, oh, you have to first. <laughs> Yeah, you have to do this thing. I'll just, I'll just yeah, sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got. Yes. All right. Something's wrong with the timer. Okay. I don't know. How to I'll use keep it, it short. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm coming as a concerned parent, as a taxpayer, and as an active community member. When we built the rail trail, um, instead of becoming, you know, a great place for families to go and enjoy themselves, it actually opened up um, for loose odors to travel out of their area and for approximately 700 odor complaints to go on over the last year. I'm concerned because we live across from um, this proposed <coughs> development and I'm worried what's going to happen when they t cut down all those trees. Um, I don't know if it's possible to do an environmental study. Um, I don't know if you can do something about, you know, uh, soil testing, water testing. It would be nice to even have that soil there tested to see what's in it. I'm just concerned that something this big, more traffic, it's becoming, I mean, it's an industrial area, and I, I think that doesn't go um, for the church, for the school, for the college. I just don't think it is, you know, a welcome addition to our neighborhood. I'm actually really um, upset to see that Mr. Brenner is the lawyer for Linden Choice because that's probably the worst choice they could have made. Um, he's the same person that stood up and said, you know, that the air was fine coming from Aloof, and that's not the case. He also stood up here during many town board meetings and Excuse said... Excuse me, can you please keep your comments to the uh, application, not the oh, attorney? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I'm just concerned with the truths coming out when people tell you things, what you're supposed to believe. That's why I brought it up, not just, you know, because we have to believe what he's saying, but I, I don't think, I think we have to dig deeper. And I hope that whatever does happen, you spell it out and hold them accountable because it seems like the boards have a hard time holding each other accountable to the decisions. So that's, that's all I have to add. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Thomas Woods, 10 Chestnut Oval, Orangeburg, New York. Sir, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not as an eloquent speaker as my wife is a writer. Um, however, I, one of the points I wanted to make is um, a variation of zero, which is the current code for these loading docks, would be one or two. 19 is a deviation, and a great deviation at that. Um, I understand that there is a concern for enclosing the docks with ventilation. Well, the current owners of that property are already having their uh, problems with ventilation, so I don't see why ventilation would be anything different with this new property. Um, idling trucks, uh, diesel fumes, the noise that's produced just by backing up into a, a dock. Um, staging up container trucks to load on and off. I've actually loaded these container trucks, and it can be done in less than two hours with a forklift. I've done it in three hours with just a pallet jack. So staging the trucks there overnight is not a requirement. It's actually more of a convenience. So um, I think that having these loading docks exposed with all the noise and the, the truck drivers themselves going in and out with loud motors is going to be more of a nuisance to the town. Uh, secondly, the 2004 application that was already approved um, I believe the property owners themselves have changed the dynamic of the neighborhood by selling to Hegarty Homes and improving the quality of the, the neighborhood. You have a residential area now that has been contributing in tax dollars to the community. Um, so far, uh, the current property owners that are trying to do this sale have caused nothing but problems for the community. So uh, I actually beg you guys to deny the, any and all variances for this and maybe review why there's an application still on the books that's over 13 years old. Uh, don't these expire at all? I mean, we've gone through three presidential um, administrations. I mean, I don't know why something like this would have to stay on the books that long. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. 
Um, my name is Rafael Caniza from 18 Spruce Street in Orangeburg, New York. Could you spell your last name? C-A-N-I-Z-A. I'm sorry, your address is 18 Spruce Street. Thank you. Sure, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help yes, you Thank you. Um, my, my comment is, may, may seem like a silly question or a silly comment, but um, that whole industrial area, we have our town officials struggling to enforce codes in that entire area, by, not, not just Aloof, but by other companies. My question is, how can you allow a company to come in um, in that same industrial area to, again, to add more uh, work for our town officials that they cannot handle? They don't have... I feel as though they don't have, we don't have the, the know-how, we don't have the expertise to enforce any kind of uh, operation that may go on there. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. My name is Tanya Wittek, um, and my address is 109 Newport Avenue in Tapan. And I would like to speak to the fall. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Tell the, truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So I'll help you guys. I do. Thank you. I'd like to speak to the following factors which the ZBA must take into consideration in making its determination. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be produced in the granting of an area variance. And two, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. The area we're discussing is home to many private homes, as we've heard, but we're also talking about significant landmarks in our community. The Town Rail Trail, St. Catherine's Church, the Blah Belt Library, these are all things that are right in that area. These are all places that hundreds, if not thousands, of Orangetown residents spend a great deal of quality time with their family. This is a significant problem, which affects a wide cross-section of Orangetown. When my children were little, they spent hours of their lives playing on the St. Catherine's Playground, and attending the family programs at the Blah Belt Library. And this happened during the weekdays. It didn't just happen on the weekends. You know, Mr. Brenner was talking about the week, you know, the weekdays. But that's when kids are using these facilities. Um, to imagine these peaceful places destroyed by the disruptive noise of 19 open loading docks is not only undesirable, it is a tragedy for this community. The noise pollution is a serious issue, as is the existing air pollution problem in this immediate area. As the ZBA is aware, I'm sure, the concerns around noxious odors emitted from aloof remain unresolved, and this cannot be disconnected from this application. I'll, I'll be su submitting a statement which was signed by 260 residents and submitted last week to the town board, and I'll also submit a statement which was written by air pollution scientists regarding the ambient air test from this summer and fall in the area of this application. These statements demonstrate the serious concerns residents have with elevated levels of compounds such as benzene, acrolein, carbon tetrachloride, and hexachlorobutadiene in the results. Many residents are concerned about adding additional traffic and pollution to this area, which is home to South, South Orange Town schools, several preschools, and Dominican College. The ZBA is charged with protecting the health, safety, and welfare of the community. Please consider carefully the impact th that this could have on the unresolved and ongoing environmental crisis in this neighborhood. We ask that you listen to the substantial concerns we have and deny granting these substantial variances to this applicant. Mr. Gad, you, you, you mentioned that you, you were submitting a petition with over 100 signatures. Did you make that part of the record? Uh, yeah. Could you please give it to Debbie? Thank you. Sorry. And uh, also, Ms. Witek, uh, are you submitting a petition? She did. Uh, yeah, she did. Sorry. Thank you. Sister Mary Eileen O'Brien, uh, President of Dominican College. Sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have the one simple question, and then I'll, I'll make a statement. Uh, we're talking about the development of this new structure. Has Aloof sold the property? Is the property no, no longer Aloof's property? It's in contract to be sold. I'm guessing one of the contingencies in the contract of sale is that the prospective purchaser of Linden Choice, whatever the legal entity is of Linden Choice, uh, obtains all 
municipal approvals that may be necessary to construct what it is they're proposing. It's, it's, a, it's a private contract of sale. Mm -hmm. That's my speculation yeah. based upon what Mr. Brenner stated in his opening comments. The reason I asked that question, it really came to my mind while I was listening here, because many of the concerns I bring forth have to do with the environmental concerns that have arisen and been published with regard to aloof. And in a sense, this property is not yet sold from aloof to this new group. That's just a fact. And I, I would just like to speak, many people have already spoken of the families and the culture and the church. The college has uh, approximately 2,000 students and uh, we use it seven days a week. Um, much, of the, much of the college uh, abuts the, the rail to trail and if, hence where the closest neighbors for, it would seem for a good part of, of what we're talking about tonight. So um, we've been concerned in the past when the environmental issues come up, we certainly would be concerned in the future. So pollution and safety and things of that nature. Another question that came to my mind, and I'm not an environmental engineer at all, but I, I heard a mention made of streams and changing the directions and things of that nature. I'm just so conscious uh, uh, St. Dominic's Convent is across the street, but and they have a big pond there, and then there are structures that go under the street, and then it goes into the college, and we have a pond there, and then it, it goes across, and it keeps continuing. So I, I think that's something that we all should look at. Where will this water end up, and if it's restructured, might it have an adverse effect? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Kate Johnson, 15 Theodore Roosevelt Drive, Blauville. Sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help, so help you God? I do. Thank you. When I learned about the four houses for sale on Murphy Court, it shook me to my core, and it brings me here tonight. Four families are uprooting their lives and evacuating, no doubt, because they feel it would be intolerable to live near the proposed development of a linen choice warehouse with 19 open loading docks. The air in this neighborhood and the surrounding vicinity, including the preschools, Dominican College, and Cottage Lane Elementary School, as well as this Joseph um, Clark Rail Trail, is already a health threat. It is saturated with carcinogenic and mutagenic chemicals according to the DEC. Exposures to emissions from tractor trailers will only compound the current air pollution problem in our community. My family lives a mile from the rail trail. When it opened, the entrance to the path felt welcoming, so we happily rode our bikes and walked our dog. In the summer, we liked how the canopy of trees made the trail dark and inviting. It appeared to be a welcome place to get out of the heat to spend some quality time outside together. Soon enough, though, we became aware of the noxious odors lurking in the air and cut our outing short, and our walker rides were ruined. We learned to avoid the path when the factory is operating and to limit our breathing of the fumes. We should not be forced to yield our right to recreation, respiration, and residence to a manufacturer that operates in our town, nor shall we allow a new facility to compromise our health, safety, and quality of life. We do not need another neighbor like Aloof. The board has the right to deny variances to Linen Choice. I wanted to add something. I last spoke um, to Sister at the water, uh, there was a water symposium at Dominican College, and her points about the um, groundwater, and you know, if something's in the air, it's gonna seep into the ground, and there, a, an earlier speaker asked about you know, environmental impact statement. I think that's a, a wonderful route to, um, to look into. I thank the board, um, for your service and for, um, we hope you make the right decision on behalf of your residences. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Janine Fiala Davis, Preschool Playhouse, 557 Western Hi. Highway. Uh, Fiala, F's and Frank, I A L A, Davis, D A V I S. Preschool Playhouse. 557 Western Highway. Sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you go? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it was not my intention to talk tonight, but after hearing everyone, feel that we have to. 
uh, the state mandates that the children play outside for X amount of time each day. Um, and we are feel fearful that they won't want to do so and that it won't be safe for them to do so regarding the air quality, um, the idle trucks, the diesel fuel, the noise factor. Um, our main concern is the health and welfare of the students that we have. We have about 130 kids on our roster that are there at the same operating hours on the same days of the week that, the, that they mentioned earlier. Um, and obviously, we want them to be as safe as possible. Personally, my son uses that rail trail every day. And I wouldn't want him doing that with all of this going on. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Monsignor Francis Macquarie, MC, capital A-R-E-E. -E. I'm at 523 Western Highway. I didn't get the spelling. MC, capital A-R-E-E. -E. I'm the pastor of St. Catherine of Alexandria in Blowbelt, and my concerns sorry. are those Sorry, that, Father. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to say Hail Mary. I swear <laughs> to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. My concerns are the same as most others that have been voiced, especially the health of our children, our CYO children, our preschool children, our religious education program, the health and well-being and quality of life of our neighbors, Dominican College, and all things that could be adversely affected. So I would recommend as the pastor that these variances not be granted. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Hurley, 202 Hobart Street, Pearl River. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Um, I just had a couple of questions and comments uh, regarding this. Um, it's my belief that the this board should deny any um, variances that are requested tonight. Um, but I did have a question in a letter from the Rockland County Department of Planning Acting Commissioner dated June 19th. And it was addressed to the planning board, which I understand is a different board, but it, it recommends a modification which states that the applicant must obtain any necessary permits from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation's Division of Air Resources for the proposed facility. So what I'm wondering is how does this modification relate to the facility and what their proposed use is? Um, why would the acting commissioner request this? And if there are necessary permits to be obtained from the Air Division, then isn't there a possibility that what's proposed may also fall under performance standards through the zoning board? Um, can the applicant explain in full Sorry, detail? Sorry, just, just to interrupt you. Yes, the, this is not a performance standards Correct. review. All air, air quality stuff has not been done by us yet. This is, that's done a, during performance standards. So they would have to come back again if they're... For performance standards. I don't know if that... I, if, if it qualifies. I, I mean, it, if it's just a warehouse, then... Okay, because one of the questions that I had was, um, can they explain what the light manufacturing would be conducted there? Because in a, a social media post um, by Supervisor Lech Chris Day, it was alluded to that some of this packaging um, in the warehouse that, was, uh, that would be um, divided and distributed then. So we're wondering if machines you, that would be used to heat seal any of the new packaging um, and if that was what the commissioner was talking about in his um, recommendations. Um, and then also at the July 12th planning board meeting, just for the record, um, Chairman Garvey uh, did tell the applicant in regards to the outdoor loading berths, quote, um, so put them inside, and quote, we're saying they should be enclosed. And this was transcribed today. So those were mentioned by Chairman Garvey from the planning board. Um, and I, although I'm aware that you're separate boards, uh, the planning board seemed to not, would not have given preliminary approval to this if the applicant demanded that the berths be located outside on that night. Um, and also the planning board did not have pertinent air quality results when they issued a neg deck. Um, because this board needs to take a closer look at all the environmental issues surrounding this facility before making a decision on the variance requests because in 2004, ambient air sampling in this area was not conducted around the site, and due to the continuous noxious odors from aloof plastics, recent data provided by TRC Solutions taken from the surrounding neighborhoods has shown that chemical concentrations of benzene acrolein 
um, have exceeded the New York State DEC annual and short-term guidelines. Uh, this must be taken into account when deliberating whether or not to allow 19 or 22 open loading berths with, a, with an undocumented amount of tractor trailers entering and exiting this facility, combined with the possibility of idling trucks. Emissions from benzene and acrolein emissions from additional tractor trailers will only exacerbate the chemical concentrations in the surrounding area. This may have Sorry, a negative impact. Sorry, two minutes impact. are running long. Can you okay, wrap sure. it up? Um, and just one other question. According to Orangetown Town Code, Chapter 21A-14, Section D, it states that if within two years after the final site plan approval has been granted by the planning board, no building permits have been issued and or performance bonds have been furnished to the town of Orangetown for construction of public improvements, the final site plan approval decision of the planning board shall be deemed to be rescinded and no permits shall be issued unless and until a new site plan has been approved in accordance with the town of Orangetown site plan regulations. So my question is, would this stipulation that's in the town code apply to the original aloof real property approval from 2004 so that no comparisons Okay, may, now, may now be you're made. really running along. Can you Okay, so up? that's the question. So that okay. no comparisons may be made between okay, we got the applications okay. um, given that Linen Choice is an entirely new applicant. Thank you. Dimitri Lattice, Piermont, 31 Liberty Street, Piermont. Sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out. I do. Thanks. Um, I thank you very much for reading into the record our physician and health professional statement uh, with regards to the, the air pollution in the area. Uh, I think it's really important to take that into consideration, not only for the residents in terms of the impact of this, but you're talking about additional employees coming in to the area. You're going to, these folks are proposing a plan of a factory, warehouse, uh, bringing in additional people directly adjacent to a toxic source. That, to me, is irresponsible. Clean up the source, then let's talk. I also have a bachelor's degree in, in landscape architecture. I moved on to medicine after that. Looking at this plan, I have to say I am not impressed. There's a lot of things that are not thought out. And I want to compliment Mr. Sullivan on your picking up on a lot of the alternatives, different orientations that would be much better fitting to a plan. Well, certainly a building of that size is not the right thing for this site. Looking at the recreation next to there, the residential next to there, it makes no sense to, to do this kind of a plan, butted right up against the rail trail with, with tractor trailers rolling in. What, we're going to have like a tractor trailer park right up against a residential area, right up against a, um, a rail trail without any real mitigation. I mean, I know we're talking about fences and trees, but in reality, this is a major impact, 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 impact. That's what we're talking about. Every aspect of this is just impacting. And second, lastly, I should say, um, we've been told that this will be a good neighbor. What kind of neighbor comes in threatening? You walk in to a neighborhood and you say, hey, let me do this or else. That's not a good neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> How are you doing? Iris Steinberg, S-T-E-I-N-B-E-R-G, 10 Murphy Court. Sir, I tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you out. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, <clears throat> in plural approval, Don Brunner references the fact that there was a 25% reduction in buffer. I've yet to see that in preliminary approval. There was no reduction in buffer. So on the side, they're building entirely within the buffer on the rail trail side, as well as on the north facing side. And I don't know, you know, obviously they should be requiring different variances. On the north east side, they're entirely within a 100 foot buffer of the residential property. So obviously there should be variances, you know, they would need variances on that. 
So I just want to know, is, you know, these variances are important variances. I don't think there should be a reduction in setback at all. I, they were never granted a reduction, a 25% reduction at all. And, you know, that's an important uh, thing that has been brought up tonight. When it comes to different these variances, does it affect the uh, surrounding environment? I believe it does so. When they got granted preliminary approval, someone made a reference, does it affect property values? My, well, my house went directly on the market. I took it off for a few months after the summertime because school year started. I don't want to move potentially during the school year. But if they get granted more approvals, I'd consider putting my house again on the market. And I want you guys to think about that when you guys consider when you, whether you grant or not grant these approvals tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Vincent Lupi, 106 Bruce Street, Blauville, New York. 106 Spruce Street. Sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got I do. Thank you. <clears throat> First question is, if this is approved at any level, I want to know if they're supposedly under contract, if they decide for any reason or the sale falls through, does, is it transferable to the original owner, aloof? So that's the first question. The loading docks, they claim that they can't enclose them for multiple reasons. One of them was <clears throat> that they, um, it's a hazard to the people working inside, but they also stated their boxes that they're gonna be dropping mostly, so why can't they put them in? There's not gonna be any fumes from a dropped box, correct? <clears throat> um, also, in regards to what you stated, um, rotating the building, putting docks on the east side rather than the west side. Um, they use O&R easement as, a, as an excuse. <clears throat> so there's no permanent structure in turnaround and access to a loading dock. They, re they mentioned retaining walls. Those are usually right up against the building. So the permanent structure, it would just be similar to a parking lot, which they're putting on the east side already. Um, reason why I state that, I'm not a local resident, but I do use the rail trail. There's already fumes that we all know about, and there's going to be fumes from trucks. There's going to be fumes from forklifts, I assume. Um, and it might not be a hazard to their workers' health, but it's a hazard to my health and everybody here and all the residents of Blowville, everybody who uses that rail trail. Uh, I lost my notes. Um, I would like to also say, I've been in the landscape industry for over 25 years, and they're trying to block a 38-foot building with fences and trees. I'd like to know what size trees they're planning on using, what the growth rate is, because I don't know of too many plants, especially if they're gonna put evergreens, which will help block noise, and maybe some of the smell, um, that grow more than a foot a year or so. So it's gonna take a long time for a 12-foot tree to become 38 feet, and also for the residents on the north side, because I think they said that's the higher elevation, they're going to be looking down towards the building. So it's not going to get blocked for maybe 30 years. <laughs> so that's, that's a concern for all of us, I think. Um, I would like to know what the distance is. They, meant, they mentioned distances to the church and the college. What's the distance to the rail trail? especially where the trucks will be in the parking area or the turnaround area to the rail trail. Um, real quick, they said, um, real quick, they said Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, that's Memorial Day, Labor Day, Fourth of July, Father's Day, Mother's Day, all could be a, potentially on weekdays when we will be using our backyards or be using the rail trail and being disturbed by their lack of disturbance that they're trying to produce. Thank you. Thank you. Street, sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got I do. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you to the board. I have a question. Has anybody asked the highway department what they think about the tractor trailers going up and down our tiny hamlet roads? My second question is, has anybody asked the police department what they think when the middle school kids are going from the middle school 
to Louis Monday through Friday, especially in the spring when they're running across the street? How are these tractor trailers going to stop on a dime and not run over our babies? Because I know it's hard for me to stop when they're running across the street. The smells from aloof plastic are horrific. They are carcinogens. Sorry, can you keep them pointed to the, to the application? Yes, to the application. Um, it's just not a good plan. And I know you guys all know that. And I know you have to operate within the guidelines of the law. But please do whatever you possibly can to shut it down. So thank you. Thank you. Jimmy O'Flynn. Jimmy? Yep. O'Flynn. Yep. Address? 75 Lovell Road. Lovell. Okay. okay. Sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guys. I do. Thank you. I uh, don't have a statement as much as a question. The building proposes 119,000 square feet, right? So allowing 20,000 square feet for office space, that's 100,000 square feet of storage. One trailer is about five to 600 square feet. It would take 100 trailers to fill that place. 200 trailers. That's six trailers a day, in and out. That, to me, looks like a bad business model for any company coming in there. So, let's say uh, Lennon Choice goes belly up. What's stopping the next guy coming in, working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and having 200 trucks coming in there every day? That's all. Thank you. Are there any further questions from the public? Once the public portion is closed, that's it. So if you have something to say, please stand up now. Wave your hand. Okay, come on up. Allison Sullivan, 42 Arthur Street. Um, Sorry, Allison. Just try to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you out. I do. Thank you. Um, I know you say that aloof has nothing to do with this, but the noxious odors do have something to do with this. You knock all those trees down, and it's just going to open up the gateways, and that problem is not solved yet. That problem has to be solved before we do anything else. I'm just begging you to get that done before we even approve anything in that spot. And as far as the, the pre-approval, I don't really understand why that application is still uh, valid, but you're saying it is, and I have to take you on your word. Um, I do have a question about the plans. Um, it's required to either have two, uh, one, one parking spot per two employees or and or one parking spot per 300 square feet of warehouse space. So that's either for them, if my calculations are right, they either put 15 spots or 566. What determines how many spots they get to choose to have? Is, is it depending on like your choice, their choice? Is it what they do in the building? I'm just curious. And um, you know, just, I, I agree with everything everyone is saying. I'm, you know, very sad. I live very close to this, and I've had to deal with a lot of issues in that surrounding property, and I think we just need to figure out what direction Orange Town wants to go in this area. We will sell our house if they, if they get approved, and, I, and that's not a warning. That is just a fact. We can't stay there. It's, it's just not feasible for us anymore. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, John Harrigan, uh, 6 Spruce Street. Harrigan, H-A-R-R-I-G-A-N. A-N, yep. 6 Spruce. Sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you guys. I do. Um, so, I, I, again, you know, like many people, were, I wasn't going to say anything, but as you said, to get to the record, um, I agree with everything that was said here tonight, um, but I think my major concern is, um, coming from Spruce Street would be the traffic um, on the opposite side on 303 and the danger possibly of tractor trailers coming in and out of um, Glenshaw. Is that the correct 
Yeah. Um, it, simply because that rise, that rise coming over from Blauvelt into Orangeburg, um, uh, you know, cars coming over it, it is dangerous coming over trying to make those turns in and out. And um, you were saying that 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. will be the working hours. And that, um, uh, that, that drive time, especially the 4.30 to 6.30, is particularly um, high density. And so um, I'm concerned with the you know, trucks coming in and out of there and causing a problem. And I, I would like to just kind of reiterate what was mentioned before is that it seems a false dichotomy to assume that you know, we either you know, uh, go with this smaller square footage building or they're going to build something larger. Um, I, you know, it, it doesn't seem to match to be assumptive that they would just build. Um, they might be good neighbors from somebody else, um, but possibly not for us. Thank you. Thank you. Going once, going twice. All right. Public portions closed. Uh, the applicant, would you like to respond? Do you want a break? Yeah, we can take a break. Yeah. So we'll take a short 10 minute recess or so. I'd like to call the meeting back to order. So please uh, have a seat. Thank you. All right, Don, would you like to uh, answer yes, some please. of those questions for Thank us? Thank you. By the way, I'm a, an attorney that's doing a job for his client. If I represented you, I would do a job for you. I am listening to everybody. There's a tremendous fear involved here. Fear on the problem with somebody next door. Fear with the odors being produced by the companies in that area. Please look at this very, very carefully. This was reviewed by the planning board. They gave a negative declaration, and in the de negative declaration, it specifically says it does not affect air quality, it does not affect surface or groundwater quality, it does not affect noise levels, it does not affect external traffic patterns. That is the negative declaration which the planning board gave in which traffic studies were gone were presented and engineering data was presented to support this. So please, you have a negative declaration by your planning board who reviewed these items. We are here primarily, primarily on the enclosure situation. In reference to what we have to show, we showed what, they ha what the owner has a matter of right. We're not saying the new owner has this, we're saying what the existing owner has a matter of right. He has a matter of right to build this. Whether he builds it or not, I'm not going to take that position right now. I don't think it's, I should. What I'm trying to say, this person who's buying the property came in and said, I saw what he had a right to do. He could have bought that map. He did not. And by the way, Dennis, when you get a chance, you'll explain to him why that's a legitimate permit today. Section 21A-14. The section of the Orange Town Code that Ms. Hurley recited into the record earlier, Section 21A-14, Paragraph D, was enacted, adopted by the Town Board on July 24 of 2006 by Local Law Number 12 of 2006, which was nearly, well, a, a year and a half, roughly, after the final site development plan right. approval of the Planning Board of October 13, 2004. Therefore, that provision, section 21A-14D, is inapplicable to the October 13, 2004 decision right. of the planning board with regard to this site. So therefore, they can build the other one. We're not, we're, we're not trying to create a fear concept. We're trying to say what a new individual who's trying to buy <laughs> this property came in and said, I won't build a big one. I'm going to try to build a smaller one. I'm going to try to build a better buffer area. I'm trying to live with the neighborhood. Quantre, now, he does not produce odors. He does not produce a noise problem. He does not produce those things. We have proved that to the planning board. I know it's a, it's, it's a fair concept, and there are people that are very, very upset. 
with the odors in that area, this is not an odor producer. It is a warehouse, okay? And the elements are pretty much done there. Okay, is there a hardship if he encloses it? Yes, it's a $3 million hardship if he encloses it, if that's what you want for the record. This use is the best use in the LI district. You don't have manufacturing, you are limiting your time, you are limiting what you have. To, it is the best use for the residents in the manufactured district, and it is a taxpayer. Okay, we're not trying to hurt the people in the area. We're not trying to hurt anybody in, in terms of where they live. But please understand, this is not an odor producer. This is not a noise producer. This is not a traffic problem. They've already been resolved and, and analyzed by the planning board who did this. Now, you asked, does anything take place in, in the building? Yes, it does. We did tell the planning board that there will be some sewers because sometimes fabrics come in and there will be some people that will sew fabrics to repair a tear. We did tell the planning board there may be four or five or ten seamstress that would make some kind of adjustments if something came in and they had to fix it. That's the only, and I don't call that manufacturing, I call that a, a repair or anything of that sort. And we did disclose that to the planning board. The landlocked properties, the landlocked property was created by the town of Orangetown. They had access to Troop Road, but when this was done, it was specifically said, that's only an emergency access, okay? So they created, the town of Orangetown created the landlock. They don't have right to go to Mountain View Avenue. If the trucks came out, went into Mountain View Avenue, the town of Orangetown said, no, the only place you can go out is Glenshaw Street, which is the right way to do it because you're going onto a commercial road and you're really creating no traffic problems Route 303 has been studied and studied and studied, and it can take much more traffic than it's there today. As, as, a, as, as in terms of time, we've already locked in the time. We've told, we've told the planning board, and we also tell the zoning board, and they bring up holidays. People are not working holidays. People, we're talking about regular working days from eight to six, I think that was the time, not working Saturday and Sunday. I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to calm down the fears here because the only variance we're looking for is the fact that he doesn't have to enclose the loading. That's the only variance. Everything else meets your town code. And the problem on that, we kind of said we have these new places that we can not have a noise problem, not have a sound problem. And um, that's where we are right now. Do we have any kind of an answer on that question? For no, we, you were gonna to speak to the client. Yeah, he's Okay, we are speaking to the client right now. If you give us a couple of minutes, we were thinking of a combination maybe of clo enclosing some of them. And that's what we're talking to the client right now. Not just to try to help the neighborhood accept this. He's not coming in there to be a bad neighbor, he's coming in there to be a good neighbor, even though people don't, don't agree. If the people have a problem with industry, I'm in, a, I'm in accord. If the town says there's something unhealthy here, I'm in accord, I am not defending, if the, if, I'm not offending, but so far nobody's produced anything that would find this kind of a use a problem. It is, it is the best use for your LI zone. Additional employees, yes, there are gonna be some additional employees, but any situation is gonna have employees, but we cut down the parking from, from an approved 252 down to 75, and that kind of is based on a formula. In other words, you have a right on the area of it, and you have a right for warehouse space, which requires less parking. What do you got? Okay. The client has said, if you take a look at the map again, if the client has said you could see, what is that, I guess that's the north? Yeah, the north. He, will, he will enclose the north section. You maybe want to show it. Yeah, the north. <laughs> and how many loading docks? Um, these loading docks are just there. 
here, so it would be four to, if we can have on the other side, five. That five would be enclosed, and then the remaining um, eight on the side would stay open. And what side Basically. is that, the eight? <coughs> eight would be on the, we we'll call it the west side. What about the north floating dots on the west side? Can you enclose those also? The, the, the ones on the top of that little projection. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Right now he's saying uh, no. Well, he's, as of the moment, that's his position. Okay. I, 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 the hardest thing to overcome is fear. There is not fear from this kind of use. It may be fear of if we were putting in an industrial plant, if they were going to produce chemicals, if we are going to do so-and-so. That could be fear. Does the neighborhood have some problems? Yes, they do. But not from this kind of use. This does not add to the problem in that neighborhood. And the problem in the neighborhood will be corrected. The town is working on it. They've hired, they're going to hire engineers to study this. They're working with the DEC. They will clean up the older problem. The town will do it. This is not a producer. Your own planning board has agreed that it's not a producer. I, I really don't know what to say. I, I've heard all kinds of fear here, and not for this job. This job was there, it's LI zone, it's always been LI zone. The owner of this property have paid substantial amount of taxes on the property. They have a right to use it. They're not doing anything proper, and they're using it in the terms of your code. Can, um, I think there was a question yes. on the distance that was asked from someone who spoke before. The distance from those loading berths to the rail trail? It, it, it's a budding. The property abuts the rail trail. I understand. So yeah. what is the distance from those loading berths to the rail trail? And that, and that is... No, what about the closest point? Uh, yeah, that's it, that's it. Oh, okay, not the furthest point. Okay. That's, so that's, the, that's the building, not the loop road. Correct, yeah, correct. And the loop road, and what is the loop road to there? Six inches. Is well, we, 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 we have to keep the road. No, no reason. There is, there is a drainage stream which we have to keep there. And that, and that the town is... Right, that's 30 feet. 30 feet? Did you say 80 feet or 80 feet? 80. 80. Okay. 30 feet to the road. To the road. Which we have to build. We have to build it anyway. We have to build it to circulate the building. We have to build the road. That's half the size of the building. Shh. Sir, sir, you can't speak it. You can't yell out like that. What is he talking about? Okay, I, I, you want to add anything, uh, Jesse? Um, just the other, there was one comment about the highway department weighing in. They have weighed in, their comments are in. They said that this project would have de minimis impact. That was the Rotten County Highway. I think the, <coughs> the commenter was referring to the town highway department. And, it, it, and it, your application is sent to the town highway department. Correct. Yes, and not only that, but they, they concluded it was okay when we got the negative declaration. There was not a traffic problem. We had a traffic engineer present the it data. Was sent, it was sent to the town highway department. If they had any concerns, they, they would have communicated. Well, you know, Bruce Peters represented the town highway department as well as anything else. And we went through this with Bruce Peters. We do not have a problem with traffic. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just, I know, I'm just trying to get <laughs> it for the, you I'm to just the, trying to put it for the record. It was sent to the Orange right. Highway Department. If they had any concerns or requirements, they would be communicated to the planning board and or the ZBA. Can you enclose more bays? <coughs> that's, a, that's not enough for me. I, I'm still at either moving the building east, I'm sorry, west. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we. We're we would uh, on paper looks terrific, except if you take a look, there's a difference of grade. There's, there's an, an or there's an yeah. there's an or there. We're closing more bays. I'm, I'm one member of the board. I'm going to close more bays, not just one. Yeah. 
Or reduce the bays and close them. <laughs> yeah, no bays. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Confer with your client, because that, that's kind of that's where we're at. That's just not enough for us. He did. Sorry. We'll just take another recess. will be open. No, but that will be open. Hold on. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. You need it. All right. You have the yeah, we're on record. Um, your head and we're good. We're good in closing. Use compass northeast, southwest. Yep. And number and quantity. Got it. Okay. And quantity. Okay. Back yeah. back on the record. We have spoken to the client. He said he will enclose the loading docks on the north side, and I guess that's the uh, the west side. He will enclose those loading docks. The only ones that will be open are the ones on the south. So I have. That's that's, a, that's thirteen, right? 13 my, my count? Yes. That's phase one. All thirteen on phase one. That's correct. That's correct. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's nice. Thank you. Debbie, do you have that? And phase it's two. Part of phase, phase two. two. Including phase two, there's a total of 22. 19. 19. 19. Where is this 22 coming from? I don't know. It was published. 19. It was published 19, 19. incorrectly. It was published that way, but it was just a rumor. There's only 19. <laughs> so for the record, there's a grand total of 19. We're already there. We're there. We were there twice. I, I like paper. I like what's on paper. That's I got yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> as one member of the board, I can live with that. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Okay, make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, for legal reasons, we actually will have to reserve decision. Um, they will be made at the probably the next hearing. Debbie, do we have room on the ja the first January? For meeting? just for other business. <laughs> hey, unless the unless the board's ready to vote. That, that is, I, well, hold on. Okay, let, let me. Uh, the hold public on. hearing's closed, Don. We're, we're talking to you, not the board. We we let's go back. Okay, okay, okay. We, we, no, we can do it. All right. We're staying. We're staying. All right. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna make a motion to approve. Suggested finding about that buffer question that you're not, you're not reviewing. No, it's a finding. Remember we talked about the buffer when we planned with Grand Rapids about this on the yeah. or not. If you're not reviewing it, you're not getting a variance for that. Then if it turns okay. out it needs a variance, then you, you gotta come back to me. You got it. Plus the so I make a motion to approve the 13 north facing, sorry, the 13 bays that will be enclosed. Sorry, so I'm really 
approving the six that will remain not enclosed, which are the six southeast facing bays. Which are not going to be constructed. Which are not constructed in phase one. That's a phase two build out. All remaining bays will be enclosed. I also approve the 280A and the street frontage variants. Um, I also would like to refer to ACCABOR to review the screening and the privacy walls still that they had mentioned that they would install. Uh, the business shall only operate Monday to Friday from 8 to 6 and shall not operate on federal, ho fe federal holidays. And as a finding of fact, the discussion regarding the buffer and setback. and setback agreed to by the planning board is not addressed in this approval or this motion. Um, I find that there are other bays in the LI zone in the town that are not enclosed. And I think that by having the unenclosed bays on the southeast side will have as little impact as possible for the surrounding neighbors. Yes. Sure. So there's a second by Joan to modify that motion also to ensure that the bays have privacy skirts or sound attenuating skirts to further reduce uh, the, opening the, opening the opening bays. The opening bays. The open bays, yes, thank you. Which is also part of phase two, yes. Would you like to further motion that, Joan? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Four to one. Thank motion you. to close the hearing? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.